Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you're coming from. My name is Zara Kassim, and I'm the Chief Executive Recording Officer started. of the Corporate Association. IA is an international federation of 15 national bodies, more than 100,000 corporate professionals in more than 100 countries. We pleased today to have partnered Institute for Company Sector, who's also a founder member of CSIA, for this webinar, and it is my distinct pleasure to welcome you to this event today. But just the COVID-19 pandemic that swept the world in 2020, and urgency around climate change has created a renewed focus on business resiliency, innovation, and also more especially, the preparedness for future risks. Organizations and their boards will continue to environment and the impact of these events on the sustainability of their organizations. The ch changes in market dynamics is just disruptions, have presented new challenges and also increased complexity abilities of boards. So that they need to be in now formation for their policy making. As the custodian of organization, one of the critical roles of the corporate secretary is to educate Developments in governance and also advise them on the M strategy. As organizations are transforming to embrace advanced technologies to inform new, which will provide them with a competitive edge in a very fast changing world, secretary also requires new skills to guide the board in a dynamic new world. Governance has developed a toolkit to facilitate the development century skills for corporate secretaries and governance professionals. Thank you for governance, Dr. Ajo Deve, sharing his vision of the future governance professional work. But first, it is my pleasure to see Thank you, Zara. Others are requested to please be on mute. Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina, Sarve Santu Niramaya, Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu, Ma Kashit Dukbad Bhavit. Let us pray for the world for happiness and well being. Let us pray that all should witness positive and auspicious events and no one should be in grief. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening friends and welcome to ICSI and CSIS first international webinar for 2021. Hopefully you and your family members are keeping well. Last year on the same day, around same time, we were doing pranayam and guided meditation with Sri Ravi Ravi Shankarji and we all have prayed that 2021 will bring so much of happiness and peace to the entire world. In these turbulent times, institutions like ICSI has a major role in terms of taking affirmative actions for its members, stakeholders and society at large. We have taken various steps in 2020 for the benefits of members, including enhancement of limit of medical reimbursement under CSBF, tie up with hospitals and laboratories, facilities for financial assistance, credit card facilities and many more under the social initiatives other than regular capacity building workshops and various crash courses as continue professional education. In furtherance to its commitment and dedication towards the society, I compliment the ICSI under the leadership of the president for creating plasma bank portal like blood bank portal so as to provide easy access to those in need and in perfect medium for those willing to come forward as donors. As we all are aware that nation is going through 
times of trials and turbulence, the spread of pandemic has called for a heightened efforts and commitment on our part as professionals to support the nation and our fellow citizens. Given the current scenario, ICSI calls upon all its members and students to volunteer to donate plasma and blood. And I also calls upon our company secretaries of pharma companies, hospital companies, medical equipments and laboratory companies to volunteer to provide support to our members for arranging medical facilities and whatever little way they can. Friends, we all are feeling helpless when our members are requesting to arrange ICU beds, oxygen, remdesivir, plasma with so much of hope. But one little support which we can extend by making few calls or forwarding messages on social media. And believe me, when our little efforts can save someone's life, it provides a great satisfaction to us. I would like to compliment all the members to help each other in this tough time to provide support by way of arranging medical facilities in whatever little way they can provide. While the world is bracing for a prolonged recovery from this massive economic crisis, good governance and innovation has become more important than ever in the process. The board of directors is now looking at innovation governance as the new management imperative. CSIA in its endeavor to felicitate Facilitate, develop and promote the profession of corporate secretaries has been reflecting on the renewed role of corporate secretaries in compensating the new age governance professional. The webinar today on 21st century corporate secretary facilitating innovation in board governance will explore the integrated business planning processes and strategies that engages innovation in achieving long term sustainable growth. With the changing dynamics of the boardroom, the need of proactive corporate secretaries has risen substantially from ensuring a robust compliance framework for sustainable development to strengthening the corporate environment and administration. Corporate secretaries today are increasingly assuming the explicit role as a board advisor to emphasize on the redefined responsibility of corporate secretaries towards the reporting on the non financial metrics of diversity and sustainability. CSIA is also organizing a webinar to launch the report climate change and the corporate secretary influencer or implementer on 6th of May 2021. I request you all to join the webinar to understand the governance practices that address climate change. An insightful panel of thought leaders would discuss in detail the research findings and the role of corporate secretary in guiding effective climate change governance. I would like to end with a small story or blog, which I have read few days back. For a small amount of perspective at this moment, imagine you were born in 1900. When you were 14, World War I starts and end on your 18th birthday with 22 million people killed. Later in a year, a Spanish flu epidemic hits the planet and run until you are 20. 50 million people die from its those two years. Yes, 50 million. When you are 29, the Great Depression begins. Unemployment hits 25 percent. Global GDP drops 27 percent. That runs until you are 33. The country nearly collapses along with the world economy. When you turn 39, World War II starts. When you are not even over the hill yet. When you are 41, United States is fully pulled into World War II. Between your 39 to 45th birthday, 75 million people perish in the war and Holocaust kills 6 million. At 47, India-Pakistan partition war. At 52, the Korean War starts and 5 million perish. At 64, the Vietnam War begins and it does not end for many years. 4 million people die in the conflict. Approaching your 62nd birthday, you have a Cuban Missile Crisis a tipping point in the Cold War, India-China war in the same year. Life on our planet as we know it could well have ended. Great leaders prevented that from happening. In 65 and 71, 71 again India-Pakistan war. As you turn 75, Vietnam war finally ends. Think of everyone on the planet born in the year 1900. How do you survive all of that? I particularly I remember this story because born in 1978 did not think about my grandmother born in 1900 and left us in 1991 understood high hard 
school was. My father, born in 1940, witnessed to the happenings in last 80 years and survived through everything listed above. I have heard the stories of first and second half of last century and now living in this 21st century. Perspective is an amazing art. Let us try and keep things in perspective. Let us be smart, help each other out and we'll get through all of this. In the history of the world, there has never been a storm that lasted. This too will pass. Human spirit is an amazing thing. Keep it pumped up with adequate positive positivity. Thank you so much. Um, inspiring. Uh, our current situation. President of uh, Dai, here's Nagendra Rao to share a few words with us. Welcome, Nagendra. Thank you. Very good afternoon to all the esteemed members of ICSI in India. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all the esteemed members of CSIA as well ICSI in the rest part of the world. At the outset, let me express my deepest gratitude and pleasure in partnering with CSIA in organizing this important webinar amidst this unprecedented times. I would also extend my best wishes to everyone grappling through this worst health crisis of our times. COVID-19 pandemic has fundamentally challenged our long established certainties of health and safety. The changes brought in the global governance framework due to these exceptional times is calling for exceptional measures. As corporate secretaries, we are standing at every step of the recovery process of the economy towards inclusive, resilient and sustainable development. As we all are aware, the responsibility for developing and implementing processes to promote and sustain good corporate governance has fallen largely within the remit of a company secretary. Therefore, it has become all the more essential for us to keep abreast with the new technology and innovation and boardroom is no exception to it. In today's turbulent world, identifying innovative strategies for business is not enough. Creating an innovation culture and equip equipping oneself with the required knowledge and skill set has become the key to stay ahead. ICSI in particular has demonstrated its preparedness and innovation by shifting its entire knowledge landscape to digital learning for all its stakeholders. It has also been shouldering the responsibility of the regulatory authorities in the country by advocating financial policies, compliance obligations and strengthening the base of the governance structure. With its four overseas center, ICSI has already made headway into the global governance map and its close association with CSIA is to sure help us in realizing its mission of developing high caliber professionals promoting good corporate governance. Today's webinar has been carefully designed to help us, the governance professional, keep the corporate sector beyond and mitigate the devastation caused by the pandemic. While our president CSIA has already applauded upon the ICSI for taking many initiatives with regards to pandemic 19 with uh, COVID-19 with regards to the setting up of portal on plasma donors or setting up of uh, blood donation, I would really and also an appeal being sent to all the company secretaries especially who are in insurance companies, who are in banking sectors, who are in medical sectors and who are also in various sectors and who are having contacts to share their details so to enable us to help all the esteemed members and students and their family members of ICSI. One more initiative I would like to just suggest upon that ICSI is already in touch with one of the big corporate giant 
where they have come across and have assured to help by virtue of their csr for vaccination once they receive the approval from the necessary approval authorities i am sure that once this particular step once they get the approval we all the members as well as the students and their family member will get the benefit i applaud upon all the esteemed members of icsi that all in one or the other way in one or the other group have extended their helping hands uh, in helping their own brethren professionals in at least helping by virtue of uh, uh, by virtue of providing the numbers of medical hospitals or by virtue of providing of uh, facilitating oxygen supplies or resorting to help our brethren i am sure that all of you have kept our icsi head high i am sure that icsi esteemed members together we will together we will handle this pandemic situation and ensure that all our members of the profession will keep the icsi flag high thank you very much i wish each and every members of not only icsi but also the csi and their family members to be safe to be happy thank you very much thank you very much uh, president before we uh, introduce dr ajo i would announce the release of a new publication from the icsi called the frequently asked questions on corporate social responsibility or csr gained growing recognition as a governance uh, in business corporate india has performed exceedingly well in discharging towards csr and bringing transformational changes in the nation by enhancing social well-being and uplifting the weaker sections is on 22nd of January 2021 notified the company the corporate social policy amendment rules 2021 said amendment have introduced significant changes in carrying out the by india with a view to guide the members a webinar on corporate social responsibility and study and considering the webinar these faqs have been framed to aid the stakeholders in understanding the new concept and also the substantial changes that has been introduced i'm now going to invite the presidents of icsi and csia to launch the publication for us ashish and indra kindly display please sonu ji raji One moment, sir. There is connectivity issue. One moment. Hey, is it now visible? so no it's not visible i think you just go ahead and show it at the later stage of the program or before the presentation of edo so it will be displayed it properly okay sir zara please go ahead you ashish um it's now my pleasure to introduce um to you a 
It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Edo de Vett, who will be facilitating our session this morning. Uh, there will be time allocated after the session if there are any facilitators from the audience. Edo has been a company secretary for almost 15 years at a large real estate company in the Netherlands. He also served as advisory board of a large and a primary school. He's the founder of the Dutch Association of Child Care and had been regularly involved in the development of several governance codes. After his career as a company secretary, Edo set up the new Uh, I think some issue at Zara and uh, Edo, you can start. I welcome Edo on behalf of ICSI and CSIA. Over to you, Edo. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, it's a warm welcome uh, to all the listeners today. And uh, thank you very much, the president of the ICSA and the CSIA, and for letting me uh, tell you something about my experiences as a corporate secretary. Um, I made a webinar. Uh, but first of all, can you hear me well, Ashish? You are my respondent? Yeah. yeah? Yes, yes, okay. yes. Okay, thank you very much. Well, uh, we had a slight different uh, kind of problems in the beginning, so my presentation, I forwarded it to Sona, Sonu. So please, if you can uh, show me the presentation. So no, again, it is not displaying. Earlier, it was showing. Yeah, first we had it. One moment, sir, again. One moment. Again. And now it's coming, I think. Yes, perfectly fine. I think it's best that I shall say next slide, next slide. But welcome again uh, for our webinar. I made a little agenda. You can see it. First of all, uh, I will take you uh, from a, my personal view as a company secretary. It's a kind of a personal journey. I tell you from stories which I dealt with as a corporate secretary. After that, I will tell you my own experiences. I see some governance developments uh, into the future also. And after that, then uh, the big topic of today is how do you get some board innovations as a corporate secretary? I will give you some examples which I developed in my own work. And maybe it gives you some inspiration see whether you can use it in your own working environment. Um, then I will end in my vision uh, with what are some new skills for the corporate secretary, some 21 century skills. Um, so that's the program for today. Afterwards, there are, is some time left for some question and answers. And I think uh, uh, it will take some about one hour, one and a half, one and a half hour. Yes, please give me uh, the next slide. I will begin with telling you something about my personal journey. Next slide, please. First of all, I want to tell you in brief who I am. I'm introduced already, but it's good for you to know. I'm uh, called Dr. Ido, um, but I'm a sociologist at one hand and an economist at another hand. That's the way I look into organization. That's the way I look into governance problems. I'm a sociologist. Um, I studied that in Amsterdam, at the University of Amsterdam. But maybe most more important, uh, that's my work, but I'm also a sports lover. And here you can see what I do. I, I would I'm love to tell you my story to the Indian public, because India is my favorite country. Here you can see what I do one in a two years. I flew 
to India with my bicycle and I cycle all the highest mountains in India and I always end in Leh Ladakh and here you can see two years ago I did it again I cycled the Gardungla, the most highest mountain in India and India is one of my favorite countries I love the country I love the economic system and the democratic system so that's what I do I'm a sports lover I'm a sociologist but I'm also a teacher I had a career as a corporate secretary uh, for over 15 years but nowadays I'm a teacher at two universities one of them is the University of Windesheim in Zwolle and the other one is the Governance University in Dorn. And last of all, I'm also founder of 24 Governance, and that's also the connection to the CSIA and the ICSI. Uh, 24 Governance is a platform with a mission, and it's my mission to increase the impact and visibility of the corporate secretary of the governance professionals worldwide. Please, next slide. But first of all, um, yeah, I'm from Holland, a corporate secretary in Holland. For those who don't know where Holland is, here you see a map of Europe. And probably you know the big countries like the United Kingdom and Germany, France, and just a tiny little country in between is Holland. It has about 17 million inhabitants, but it's pretty famous not only about its wooden shoes or cheese, but also about its financial role in the world. Um, so that's where we are, my corporate secretary in this little tiny country. And I've been a corporate secretary, it's mentioned already, for over 15 years in a big, large real estate company, a social housing company in Holland. Please, next slide. Please, next slide. And one click further, here you can see me after those 15 years. We're now in the year around 2016 is my last day at this corporation, at this big organization. One of my colleagues shot this video, it's over. I left the organization. I've done the role of the corporate secretary for over 15 years and it was a pleasant, thrilling time. It started somewhere around the year 2000 and it ended in 2016. And I will tell you some problems I dealt with as a corporate secretary, but after this period in 2016, I decided to do something completely different. I wanted to shift my job and I ended at the university. But in the years between 2016 and 2018, there was still a question in my mind for, whoa, what was my role as a corporate secretary and what were the problems we are facing and what is good governance? Um, so I wrote a book. You see it in the left. It's only in Dutch. It is not translated in English yet, but it's called in English, The Philosopher's Stone. I found in my journey, I think, some of the principles of good governance, some of the ingredients of good governance. And that is what I'm going to tell you. First of all, I'm going to tell you some of the stories I had in my own organization. Um, how did I do it? Now, when I left the organization somewhere around the year 2018, I went back and interviewed all the board members I worked with, all the directors, and they gave me some insights. But please let me tell you some of the problems I've, I've dealt with as a corporate secretary. Because it was a thrilling time at this in this combination. This, for example, here you see an Audi A8. It is one of the most expensive cars. It's an armored Audi A8. And it's a car which has been given by uh, the chairman to the CIO of my company. It's somewhere in a year around 2010. The CA, CEO asked the chairman for an armored car. And in a one-to-one -one conversation, the chairman said, it's okay for me to you to buy this big expensive car. But he had not uh, negotiated it with his own uh, fellow members at the board. So it's a one-on-one. -on -one. But he said, yeah, I had to go along with the CEO 
But he said to me that he wanted to visit the tenants in our dangerous neighborhoods and he was very scared of being shot by some of the tenants. So he needed an armor uh, car, an Audi A8, which is somewhere around 300,000 euros. It's not done in a company, but it did. It happened. The decision was being made by the chair. Please, next um, uh, slide. This is also one of the big problems we had to face as my role as a corporate secretary. We were a very ambitious organization. We had uh, somewhere around 80,000 houses in the Netherlands. Here you see some of the houses. Completely different, I think, from India, but this is a typical home in Holland. Um, but we were an ambitious corporation and we wanted to, my CEO wanted to connect every home to fiber to the home, to get cable to the homes so they can have internet, television and telephone. But it was a tremendous big investment. Somewhere around 100 million euros had to be invested. It was yeah, approved by the ministry that we could do it, but we have to negotiate to, uh, to a contractor who had to put all these fibers into the homes. So it was a big, very big negotiations. And we had some principles, some governance principle that were always four eyes to these negotiations. And in this case, we had the contractor, the CEO, and my role as a corporate secretary was the assistant by these negotiations. And in the final negotiations for who was going to pay this 100 million euros, my CEO peeled off the contractor slice by slice. It went very well for us as a company. And it was thrilling. And I was excited about what a fantastic CIO I have. He peeled off the contractor very, very good. And after the negotiation would last for maybe three or four hours, at the end, I was thinking, whoa, this is going to be fine. Please slide in front. It, it is going to be very fine. And now we're going to toast and have a little glass of champagne and a big cigar and all is pretty well. But at the end of the negotiations, pretty at the end, my boss, my CEO asked me, please, please stand up. Go out of the room, stand out of your chair. You can leave the room because I have to discuss something in private with the contractor. And I rise up from the chair. I leave the room. And when I close the door, I was thinking, what have I done? It didn't feel well. Why does the CEO have to speak to the contractor in private? And afterwards, I heard what what happened. The CEO what a, was a big negotiator. He, he got a brief, a bribe, sorry, from the contractor for about six million euros. And he took it in his pocket. It was a bribe. And he fled to America. And now he's living in America uh, with his secretary. It happened. It happened in our company. And this is the last one. This is also happening in a company. It's after the financial crisis. And um, yeah, we had some serious problems about derivatives. There were very poisonous derivatives injected in our, in our uh, company. And somewhere around the year 2015, 2016, we almost got by bankruptcy. Uh, we had a loss for over 1 billion euros. How could it happen? Uh, what bad decision has been made by our board? How did it happen? It was some terrible problems we have dealt with over these 15 years. It was the terrible things, but also wonderful things happened also in this 15 year as my career as corporate secretary. Please, next slide. But it gives rise to some questions in my head. After the 15 years, when I left the corporate, the company, I was thinking and I was asking myself the question, what is good governance? How to create fair and honest decision making? And what is my role or what was my role as a corporate secretary? So with those questions in my mind, somewhere 
around the year 2018, I thought, well, I have to go back. I have to go back to all the board members I work with, all the directors, and I asked them these maybe simple questions. So I asked all the board members I work with, please, please tell me what is good governance. Please go back to the years when you were working at my corporation and what for you is good governance. And I heard so maybe 30 or 40 stories of all these board members and directors. I got them all lying on my desk. And I will give you one example of a story I heard of one board member. Please, next slide. So I asked him, it was one of the big chairman, a big board members in my chair, and I asked him the question, please tell me, what is good governance? And it was a big boss, it was a really big boss. And he was telling me this, here you can see our headquarters, one big giant headquarter in Baar in Holland. And he was telling me, well, I was very busy at that time. I had a very busy job. But at the end of the day, he was always going to the headquarters by his car because there was a meeting by the board. And he told me I was busy, always busy. And I was a bit tired at the end of the day. So I parked my car near the headquarters and then I walked to the headquarters and you don't can see it but it was this high door the three meters up high doors and he entered the building and when i entered the building it looked marvelous it was marmor on the floor everything smelled very well so he said i get a bit relaxed i get relaxed relaxed and what i did every time i walked down to the room below and in this room they had prepared a dinner and that's true because my role as a corporate secretary was also that I had to prepare some food for the board members. And we always ordered some Chinese food because they love Chinese food. And these board members tell me where, when I entered the room, the dining room, it already smelled like ginger, uh, ginger and it smelled very well. And I had to wait in the queue for my dinner, a queue with all board members and all people who worked at the company. And I worked and then I picked up my food on my plate and I went down and sat on a big, in a big chair on a table. And I was watching people eating dinner and they were chatting over every kind of things, job, private, personal things. It gave me so much information for my role as a board member. It was pretty very good, very good. And at eight o'clock, sharp eight o'clock, Almost, the chairman said to the other board members, well, please finish your meal. We have to go up and have our meeting. And we put our dishes aside, went up to this big room, which you can see, it is the boardroom. It was a marvelous boardroom. They said we walked behind the chairman up to this room. And when we entered the room, there was also a big table and the secretary had put every notes at the table and a cup of co coffee and the spoon was put very well and everything was ordered it was very perfect but he said when he entered the room he said the magic was gone magic yeah he said the magic was gone so i was thinking i heard all kind of stories some people some board members tell me some terrible decision they had to make, but he was telling me something completely different story. He, he was telling me about a memory to an experience, not the experience of good governance, but the memory to an experience. And that I find very interesting. And I was thinking when I had all those stories on my desk, well, there should have to be some professor who studies this phenomena. Next slide. And there is. And there is. And his name is Daniel Kahneman. He's a very famous Nobel Prize professor. And he has studied many things. Um, and he, uh, uh, for example, a big study about happiness. And he was telling me, well, if you ask something, uh, ask the simple question, what is happiness? You get all different kind of answer. 
It looks a simple question, but it is a difficult question because the answers you get that was given by your brains. It's sometimes the answer is by the experience self that you experience happiness, and sometimes people are, uh, are answering the question by the remembering self. And it's all mashed up when you hear the answers, but he is telling me, no, you have divided to the, the things. You have to check whether the question is being answered by the experience self or the remembering self. And he did a kind of scientific research. He showed me the results and I show you to them because when I heard the research and the results, it opened my eyes. Here you can see something from Daniel Kahneman. He showed me this result. He said, when I did uh, a kind of research, I have two groups, two patients, group A and B. And I injected them with a, with a tube with pain. And the patients had to report the pain they experienced. They experienced pain with a tube. And here you can see the results. You see patients A who uh, gave the answer that he experienced pain for somewhere around eight minutes of time with the highest peak on eight on a scale from zero to ten. So eight minutes. The group of patients B, they uh, reported that they uh, faced the experienced pain for a longer period of time, up to 28 minutes, with the highest peak of eight. So it's simple, he said, I can explain that patients group B experienced more pain than the group of patients A. Simple, as ratio. But after two weeks, he went back to both patients and I asked him the question, please, in your remembrance, what was better? How much pain did you experience in your remembering? And the answer was that the group of P, group B, of patients B, and their remembrance experienced less pain than group A. And how come? He explained how come? Because the experience is declining to group B. So in their remembering, it's not the highest peak at 7 at point A, but it's 1. It's different when you ask the question, please, what is your remembrance than the real experience? And I was thinking with the stories I heard, well, then it's obvious to me. The simple question, what is good governance, can't be answered. It is a difficult question because sometimes you hear the answers of the experience of good governance and sometimes the remembrance of good governance. And Daniel Kahneman stated it is so important because you can adjust remembrance to happiness or the remembrance to good decisions or the remembrance to good governance. Not the experience itself, but members to the governance you can adjust. And that is the interesting thing because he said the best explanation for future decisions also in this research which group would take another pain is group B. The remembrance to the experience is the best explanation to future decisions, whether it's in, it is in governance, in board issues, or it's in personal business, buying something in the shop. And this is fundamental, and one of the first groups who adopted this principle, this philosophy, was the marketing. Please show me the next slide. The marketeers, it's very interesting and adopted this principle and then you will see, please next slide, because Daniel Kahneman said us, told us it is our job also as a corporate secretary but also as a marketeer to search for touch points, he calls it, to have to peaks. Peaks will give you a remembering. Peaks can be bad, negative, positive peaks. And he also told us, please always make sure and what you do if you're organizing an event 
or a board meeting or whatever, please always make sure that there is a positive ending. Because the positive ending gives you the lasting memory at the end. And the memory will stay forever. And this peak end rule is adopted by the marketeers. Please, next slide. Here you can see, and what's, what is it called? And maybe some of you know it already. It's called a customer journey. And here you see a customer journey made by, by a big company called IKEA. I'm sorry for it, it's in dust, but I will pick up some touch points. What about we're going to buy a new bench in IKEA? And the marketeers of IKEA already have been thinking how can they create the best memories to the buying experience. And here they designed the buying process of a simple customer. And the first one, when you enter the IKEA, you park your car, you go into the shop. And the first one in Holland, I don't know if it's for sure in India, but in Europe and Holland, the first touch point where you get your memory <coughs> is the child garden. You can leave the children behind and you get to go shopping on your own. And then you go shopping into the shop and they can get a cup of coffee, some dining things, and you're buying all along. But in the end, you see the peak end. And it's the peak end after you paid for your stuff. There is the peak end, which gives you the memory, the positive memory to the IKEA. And that is that you can very cheap buy a hot dog or an ice cream. That will give you the best memory in this case to IKEA, which in this case will give you a positive memory and you will keep coming back. When I studied this customer journeys, it's a complete different world from our world in boardrooms and governance. But I was thinking, oh, that's interesting. What I have to do to make impact in the boardroom as my role as a corporate secretary is not making customer journeys, but making governance journeys. And that was my first big innovation as a corporate secretary. Please, next slide. I made governance journeys because in my role as a corporate secretary for over 15 years, one of my main tasks was always preparing for board meetings. I had my role during the board meetings and making the notes after the board meeting. But in this boardrooms, in this meeting, I was thinking about where are the touch points? How can I develop these touch points, reinvent, redesign these touch points to make them more positive and less negative so that they will give a positive memory to this governance event? So I was trying to make governance journeys. This, this is my new role. And it was something completely new because I had to think in a creative way. It was different from my traditional way as being an assistant to the board. So this is the first part of my slides. We had to uh, knip the presentation. Sonu, can you please, yeah, maybe there are some questions so far, and otherwise we uh, skip to the second part of my presentations. In the meantime, maybe there are some presentation, otherwise. <coughs> Shall I go on? Yes, okay. please. Yes, please. Okay. Well, as I told you, uh, these stories of all these board members give me this insight about creating memories to their board experience. Um, and that's what I did in the last part of my journey. And when I look back now in my role as a corporate secretary, it started in 2000 and it ended in 2016. There were uh, some uh, major phases in my role as a corporate secretary some governance developments, and I will uh, show you the, the, the big governance developments in my role as corporate secretary in Holland and Europe. Maybe the, uh, some similarities in India, just please next slide.
And again, the next slide, please. Because, uh, oh, sorry, one previous slide. Previous slide, previous. Oh, yes, the challenges of the COSEC. Um, before telling you something about the phases in governance, I see, uh, here you see, um, as I told you, I'm, I'm also a teacher at the Governance University, and the Governance University in Holland, Holland every four years, they are searching uh, uh, corporate secretaries and asking, this, uh, asking questions about what are your big challenges. This is an investigation or research done in 2014 among, among Dutch corporate secretaries, and these are the three big challenges they were facing somewhere around the year 2010 up to 2014. On top, first was they had to improve governance information to the board. That was the big challenge, improving governance information. Second one is facilitating governance processes, including risk management. And the third one is the internal and external compliance to the company. That these are the challenges of the COSEX in Europe. Please, next slide. And what I see, uh, here you can see I put the phases of governance I, I was facing in time from 2000, 2005 up to 2020. And it's in my opinion, there's always a kind of, please, one, uh, one back. Please, one back, back. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Stay here. There's always uh, uh, certain phases also in governance. Uh, from the, uh, in Holland, in Europe, from, where, from around the year 2000 to the first financial crisis, 2015, you see, uh, the use of governance in organization is based on, the focus of governance is on regulation and formalization. And the base should, the, the foundation has to be good. So every organization is implementing governance codes, uh, board, uh, uh, the, the, I have been the assistant to the board. So the foundation has to be good. And it's up till 2015. So when I look at this first phase, the regulation and formalization phase, and I look back in my role as a corporate secretary, next slide please, I was, and I think in those times, the most important role of the corporate secretary was being a good and proper assistant to the board. Many decisions has to be taken. Uh, Preparing the board in the boardroom meeting and after the boardroom meeting. It is the traditional board assistant, a very, very important role, but the focus was also on this role. But during the financial crisis, somewhere around the year 2014, uh, also in the board and also my CEO was asking me different kind of questions, which I haven't dealt with. He was asking me different kind of questions. Next slide, please. And the challenges has, have also been investigated, this time by ICSA, uh, in 2018. Somewhere around this crisis, board members were asking different questions to corporate secretaries. More and more, <coughs> corporate secretaries had to pay attention to relevant social issues and put these to the boards. The second one, and I think that's the most important one, more and more the role of the corporate secretary has begun to redesign the procedures and controls capable of address, addressing tomorrow's challenges. So it's not only being an assistant, assistant <coughs> but in my role as corporate secretary, I had to think about how do I get the governance pro procedures more effective or more efficient. I had to redesign these procedures. And the third one, maybe the most important one, I think more and more the role of the corporate secretary will be that he has to be able or capable of acting as the conscience of the organization. <coughs> Please, next slide. And here you can see Somewhere for me in around the year 2014 up to 2018, 
my role changed. I was not only uh, a board assistant, but the problems I had to face were more and more about compliance and board processes, being capable of redesigning these board processes. Please, next slide. So my role changed. Not only being a board assistant, but more and more I was becoming a board innovator. That's an interesting, completely new role for me as a corporate secretary. The last board, the, 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 the role of board assistant, I still had the role of board assistant, but there was a new role of board innovator. And what I call it in my book, board innovating. <clears throat> Please, next slide. But what are board innovations? Well, that's the interesting question for now is what are board innovation and how can I create board innovations? Now, let me first of all give you a brief definition of how I see, how I look to the word board innovation. Next slide, please. The term board innovator or board innovation refers to the unconventional use of ICT and other tools, people, setting, process, everything, that help corporate secretaries to solve everyday problems by running board meetings and to, to realize meaningful board experiences and support good decision making. So you have to deal with everyday problems in and around your board. But when you are a board innovator, you solve these problems in an unconventional way. That's the trigger. Um, now, maybe I can give you some examples of how I did, of how I did my role as a board innovator in my company. So as I told you, next slide please. First step is, <clears throat> I started by thinking up front when there was a, an important board meeting, I made a governance journey. I was thinking, but the process is still the same, uh, preparing the board meeting, during the board meeting and after the board meeting, and I have to search for some touch points, hopefully pos positive touch points, and I have to identify the negative touch points. Negative po touch point can, pro uh, for example, be when you're preparing the board meeting if you, and you have to send uh, uh, the information to the board meeting is always too late. A negative one, how can you make it positive? So I was making very quick a governance journey of every boardroom meeting. <clears throat> Next slide. And in those times, when I make these governance journeys, my CEO was asking me, uh, they had to take uh, some very important decisions and he asked me, please, Ido, uh, will you uh, try to develop five important boardroom meetings? Five very important boardroom meetings. Um, and he told me, uh, I give you free hands. You can do anything you want as long as we can take decisions, the decisions as a board, effectively and efficiently. And I said, I get a free hand? Yeah, you can do anything. And then I started in my mind, whoa. How can I make a governance journey with impact, where I have high impact? And I started to identify some of the negative touch points. And here you can see one. It's just one example. When we had a boardroom meetings in those times, uh, there was sometimes no active participation between the CEO and the other boardroom men, members during the boardroom meetings. They were dull, and the meetings lasted maybe for a couple of hours, but no active active participations. And maybe you think, oh, uh, that's the same in my, in my boardroom sometimes. And I was thinking, okay, what can we do? How can we make a board innovation uh, to solve these problems in an unconventional way to get them active, active in the board? Now, what we, do, uh, what we did was the following thing. And then you can see how does the board innovation work. Next slide, please. We addressed the issue. So there's no active participation during the boardroom meetings. And it was a really problem because there was also another 
define problem in the boardroom meeting that sometimes yeah, the board there was authority bias. You know, when the CEO took the word, word everything, everyone was sitting back trying to listen. And when the CEO or the chairman said, we have to go left, everyone was saying, okay, then we go left. So there was a kind of authority based bias when you look to good decision making. So we were thinking we have to deal with these two problems and then we get inspired by another industry. Industry. It's a kind of what we call crossover innovation because many of the solutions already exist, but then in another part of the world or in another industry. And I was sitting there with two of my colleagues and we were thinking how to deal with these problems. And we got inspired by a big famous television show which was running at the time in Holland. It, it was called The Wereld Draait Door. It was a very famous Dutch talk show with a talk host, Matthijs van Nieuwkerk. And here you can see him on the table. And there were always vivid, lively uh, discussions at the table. And we were thinking, how about when we use this inspiration by designing our boardroom meeting? Then we have to think in a different way about the decor of a boardroom. We maybe have to think about putting audience into the boardroom, which was not done. We also have to think maybe we have to put an empty chair always at the boardroom table so someone can sit into the empty chair if he wants to talk to the boardroom members. It's his own responsibility. And the last one we were thinking now, when there is authority bias, always the CEO, maybe we have to see to look for an independent chair, a host who is facilitating a discussion, a decision making process. So we got inspired by this crossover industry. And next slide. Here you can see what we did. Here you can see us sitting not in a traditional boardroom. We searched for a completely different boardroom. Uh, and here you can see the table. In the middle, you can see with the ties, the CEO, the CFO, CFO, the chief financial officer is at the table and two directors. They are discussing a topic. A big uh, decision had to be made. But you can see the yellow chair is empty and the board is uh, the boardroom table surrounded by the most important board uh, uh, directors and managers of the company. So if they want to join this conversation, Although it's not their primary responsibility, they can join this conversation. They give them new insights. And you see the man in the white shirt, that's the talk host. He has a microphone. He's using the microphone to stimulate proper and good decision making process. This was something completely different, but it worked. It worked pretty well. We had designed, redesigned this decision-making process in this way. Next slide. And because it worked, we were thinking, whoa, we have to go on by redesigning and solve these daily problems in an unconventional way. And when we were thinking about these decision-making processes, these board processes, we also had to face many times with time management. We're always running out of time to uh, yeah, that's one problem. And the second one is groupthink bias. Uh, sometimes there were eight persons at the table. And when the first one has said, well, uh, I think we have to go right. Second one says, also, we have to go right. And the third one go right. And the fourth one say right. And the fifth one who wants to go left. Oh, that's a difficult one. Because the group also had decided we have to go left. So, we were thinking how to deal with these two problems in the boardroom, um, time management and groupthink bias. And we were, again, very inspired by this uh, television show in Holland because with a talk host in his television show, he was capable of uh, making a proper decision-making process, good conversations at the table, but he was also so had to deal with time management and he has a genius invention 
when they had a conversation at the table, they were always, here you can see them, two musicians putting aside in the corner. And when the time was running up, it was running out of time, the musicians started to play. And it was a signal to the host, oh, sh I have to end this discussion, I have to go to the next one. And we were thinking, well, maybe we can use music, musicians, in our boardroom to create a more effective and efficient boardroom process. Again, we had our inspiration from another source outside our boardroom, television series, but we were thinking, whoa, how do I have to redesign our boardroom? Again, we had to think about the decor. We decided, well, we are placing a DJ into our boardroom. And again, we were thinking, well, then we had to get, have audience in our boardroom during the meeting. Please, the slide. And here you can see what we did. The DJ, his panel, you can see it. You can see me as a corporate secretary. Um, and what the DJ did was the following. There was a topic at the boardroom table they were discussing, heavily was discussed, but they were running out of time. Then my role as a corporate secretary, I gave a signal to the DJ and he started playing a music song. And when he started to play a music song, there was a, a discussion at the table. The boardroom members heard the song and it was a signal for them to lean back in their chair. And they were listening for one minute. Whoa. What sound did the DJ choose? Because I asked the DJ, please pick a sound in which reflects the discussion at the boardroom table. So I asked the DJ, please tell the boardroom members why you choose this song. And the boardroom members uh, listen to the DJ. It gives them some new insights. And they took it in the last conversation in the bottom table before they make any decisions. So we used music, we also used lights. For example, uh, one tip of mine, when you have uh, a financial subject in your boardroom, please put some blue light on it. Uh, it's already investigated. The blue light is connected to finance, finance and control. When you have uh, a subject which is more creative in your boardroom table, please uh, take care of put yellow light on the boardroom table and it will help you to stimulate uh, the brains to be more creative. So we try to experiment with sound, with lights, with the environment to create positive memories. That's the main thing. Now, the last thing, because I decided myself, I give you three examples of board innovations. This was during a boardroom meeting. Please, next slide. Um, but yeah, my traditional role as a corporate secretary is I had to prepare the boardroom meetings, my role during board, boardroom meetings, but also after boardroom meetings. And this is a traditional one. I think it will be recognized by most of the corporate secretaries. Uh, the session has been done, the boardroom has been done, the meeting has been done, sorry. And I had to make the notes and the reports and all the boardroom members and all the directors always were complaining about too many reports were coming too late. It was a lot of peak of load, load of work for me. How can I, can I do the job proper and in time? So there was always this big, huge amount of work after the boardroom meeting. Um, and we were thinking, well, this is a problem we are facing every week. How can we use an unconventional way in dealing with this problem? Please, next slide. You see the issue again. Too many re reports. Too late after the boardroom meetings. And we got inspired, this time not by a television series, The World Dry Door, but by sports, by sports coverage. That was our source of inspiration. Because when you have a game 
in any sports, you have a live coverage. A live coverage. And we were thinking, well, maybe this live coverage or live reporting can help us in making the reports even faster and send them to the board. So again, we have to think about the decor by using ICT. We choose live reporting in our boardroom meetings and again, the audience. And here you can see our results. I, I told you I had to make uh, and prepare five boardroom meetings. And here you can see what we did. Again, you can see the table, the boardroom table with the chairs. Uh, in the end, you can see me uh, standing before my uh, laptop uh, with a white screen. It's connected to the screen. And when the boardroom uh, had to deal with all these problems and the discussions, I stood there and I give live report to the discussion, to the people, to the audience. And I make the note, not afterwards, but during the meeting. So when a decision has been taken, I was reporting, well, please wake up everyone, the audience, this is a difficult decision. I shall wrote it down. You can see it here, or shall write it down. Is it correct to you? The, peop the, the board members had to spell out their decisions. I just reported the decisions, and right in time, I asked them, please, did I write it down correctly? And when they say yes, I had to report. The report, I finished the report, not after the meeting, but before the ending of the boardroom meeting. So when the boardroom has ended, I finally had to put my finger on the button and every decision and every report as being emailed by the boardroom members. So it was very, very efficient and very active, effective to the board. So these are three kinds of board innovations which I did in my role as a corporate secretary. So first of all, you have to think about the governance journey, your traditional role as corporate secretary, preparing during or after your boardroom meetings or in other governance processes, which are the touch points and which one can I influence or can I make more positive? Because in the end, um, you have to see if you can get positive memories to your governance experiences. And after these five meetings, which I did in this way, uh, we were asked, the, the board members, please give me some insight about the results. Please, next slide. Oh, sorry, uh, that's, uh, and I, for I forgot, I forgot the last one. Um, uh, one back, please, because it's a difficult one. Uh, because I told you, uh, next slide, one, one up, one, one up, thank you. Because I told you, um, the principle is that you always have to look for a positive ending also in boardroom meetings. That's the peak end theory, because the memory to this peak end will last longest. This after our boardroom meetings, which were tough, hard decisions, competing. Afterwards, we always ended this way. We always ser served a proper lunch. It always was in an informal setting. They could chat about the boardroom meeting. They could chat to each other. This was the peak end. Next slide. And what are the results? We asked the boardroom me members. And they were all saying, in this way, by creating these touch points and making more magical moments in our boardroom members, it affects the boardroom processes more in an efficient way. It helps the decision making in a more effective and efficient way. Second one. It also gives me, by doing so, more impact as a corporate secretary in the boardroom. I feel, felt like a producer. I had to produce this boardroom meeting. I had everything under control from the beginning till the end. Uh, and the also, the board was seeing it. They were allowing it me to, for me to do so. 
So it gave me some impact in and around the boardroom, but it was also very, very fun to do. Very fun to do. Think about all the possibilities you have when you can solve the problems in an unconventional way. So it gave me impact fun, but also very much confidence to do my role uh, as a corporate secretary. And last of all, as I told you, the first part of my, uh, my, of my job as a corporate secretary is being a board assistant, a more traditional role. You have to be accurate, etc., etc. But in this role, the board innovations, I had to be open-minded. I had to be creative. I had to learn some new skills. And I think that is what we have to do as corporate secretary, not only the proper skills, but also be open-minded and learn the new 21 century skills. But with these skills, you can make a difference to your board. Please, next slide. And what do I see as, next slide again, the new skills? Here you can see them. I think, yeah, what you see is they are needed also for the corporate secretaries who have impact in the boardroom are the four C's. More and more, you have to be competent in your communication, in your collaboration with the board, but also with the, uh, the other people in your organization. But most of all, I think, D of creativity, try to think and solve problems in a new way, creativity, open-minded, but still, Critical thinking, last one, critical thinking, because in the end, what you do as you uh, try to make uh, positive memories in your boardroom meetings by these touch points, by all these fantastic things, it is not about creating a party. It's all about creating good perspectives for the board for the decision making process. So you still have to think critical, what information do I have to get on the boardroom table? What perspectives do the board need to make the good and upper decision? But these are four new skills which I learned on the job. I had some, uh, had some training courses about how can I be creative and how can I be creative, critical thinking, but then it's on the job and just do it. Just do it. Next slide, please. So, I think um, that is hopefully one of the lessons uh, I learned to you today, that creativity, one C, and an open mind will be crucial also for your role as a governance professional or a corporate secretary. Because creativity, with creativity, you can create these experiences in or around boardrooms or in and around governance processes. Experiences which yeah, can be, as you see in this example, whether it's the use of uh, sounds, of lights, environment, uh, storytelling, themes, whatever. Uh, if you want to, you can create your own experiences for the boardroom. And when you have the experiences, when you have the designed your experiences, your magical moments, yeah, just uh, remember it is in a governance context. It is not about partying. It has to be adjusted, adapted into a governance context, which for me is mostly a decision making process. So it has to be positive to the decision making process. But when you do it by heart, so it's not only a ratio, but when you try to stick and attach something of emotions with your experiences, then you will see, at minimum, you will have a lasting memory. This after a year, when I did all these boardroom meetings, people still were saying, whoa, that was fun, what we did at those times. A lasting memory, just remember, is the best prediction for future decisions, also for board. And hopefully you create these magical moments which will give you some transforming memories. So board members 
due to the experiences will maybe make even more better decision in the boardroom itself. So that is in brief the summary uh, what I've done for uh, in my own uh, role as a corporate secretary and it's still in my mind I still do it but nowadays I'm not a corporate secretary anymore but um, it's still in my mind how can we create these experiences and how can we create experiences also for decision making processes and boardrooms and I will end my presentation with a slide which is coming soon, it's the future, what we can, uh, are going to do next summer. As I told you, I'm a sports lover, not only a cyclist, but also a soccer lover, football. And it gives me so much inspiration. Because um, when, I, when you ask me the question, what is good governance? I think, yeah, the board has to take the upper and good uh, and transparent decisions in the board. Uh, and sometimes it's difficult, sometimes it's not. My role as a corporate secretary is to give them or to provide them with all the necessary perspectives uh, they need to take the decisions. But in football, now for about three years, there's something strange going on because a reverie in football, in my opinion, is the same as a board member. He's taking decisions every day. During the game, on his whistle, he blows on his whistle, stop, and he takes a decision. And for 100 years, it goes on this way. Subjective, blows on his whistle. But now, for three years, there is a system intervention. Uh, they implemented the video assistant reverie into the game. And that's interesting because it gives the reverie the possibility to check his decisions he has made during the game. Sometimes, he is asked to come to the side of the pitch and see another angle. He is given another uh, part of information and, and then he says, oh, maybe I have to do uh, make the, the decision again. So that's interesting because it gives football more transparency. It gives football more and better decisions, more objective decisions. And I was thinking in my head, what about if we can use this metaphor, a video assistant referee, and put it into a boardroom? Then you have a far into the boardroom. So boardroom, boardroom members can maybe present it extra information, extra governance content, uh, extra video content, which they can use for their boardroom decisions. So I asked uh, uh, the director of uh, the Dutch Football Association, please can we investigate the ingredients of the VAR, which helps in football to make good and proper decisions. So we're going to investigate after the championship in summer, and we, can, uh, we are going to investigate which of these principles of the VAR can be used into the boardroom. So hopefully, uh, in the end of this year, we're going to present you a lot of more interesting new insights about creative tools which can help you also as a role in your role as a corporate secretary to create your own magical moments in boardrooms. Um, and that's what it is. Well, next slide. Thank you for listening and maybe there are some questions. Thank you, Ade, for your presentation. I have some questions from the audience. One question is the small medium enterprise sector in India has a huge potential to grow and become big corporate. What innovation can we incorporate in the SME sector as a company secretary, small and medium enterprise? Yeah, as I told you, my, I, I, uh, I was working in my company also as a, as a medium enterprise. It is a large uh, enterprise. 
But I think, um, what, what is the question? How can you grow as a, as, as a small and medium enterprise? Yeah, in a small and medium enterprise, what innovations regarding this board governance can we initiate? Uh, when I, uh, now my, yeah, it's kind of an advice. Uh, for me, um, when you have a small enterprise or medium enterprise, you can say, well, um, it's, it sounds maybe a bit uh, big and difficult uh, what I tell you about making governance uh, uh, approaches or making magical moments, but it isn't. It is a method which you can use very easily. It took me, when I had to prepare a boardroom meeting, and I had to make a governance journey. Um, after some training, it took me maybe half an hour. I was thinking, okay, this is it. And then you can use it with a couple of people. You get the inspiration and the creativity. Well, maybe a small one, not a big one, but you always can feel, well, maybe this is not going pretty good in our boardroom or in a governance process. Please pick one. Begin very small. And you can see if it's useful when you can create uh, an, a solution to the problem in an unconventional way, and it works, it will help you also as a governance professional to have some impact to the board. And they will allow you maybe to do another one. So try to make it from small to even bigger. That's my, I think, my advice to the small and medium companies. Any other? Oh, let's see, Ashish, but Sonu? Yeah, I think Sonu, now uh, you can uh, display the release uh, by the hands of the president, which um, uh, the display was not able to done at the beginning. Yes, sir. Raji, please display the images. First, the FAQ flyer. Is this visible? Yes. So we are releasing the FAQs on corporate social responsibility by the hands of the president. So it will be mailed to all the members soon and it will be beneficial um, in the present uh, circumstances and present situation. Thank you so much ICSI and Directorate for coming out with such uh, uh, FAQs on CSR. Thanks to council colleagues under the leadership of the president. Thank you, Ashish Ji, President CSIA. Uh, Sonu, release uh, the flyer of the um, uh, coming um, uh, climate change program and then I will request Zara to present the vote of thanks. Rajiv, please display. I think sir, it's showing you. No, it is showing same Rajiv. It is showing FAQs on CSR. No sir. It is showing FAQs on CSR only. You have to change the flyer that is uh, climate change. Some technical issues again. Rajiv, try it once again, else we'll go for vote of thanks. So, I think I'm requesting Zara to please present a vote of thanks on behalf of the CSIA as well as ICSI.
तो दिस इज द प्रोग्राम विच इज शेड्यूल्ड ऑन थर्ड ऑफ थर्ड ऑफ मे बाय द सी एस आई ए ऑन द क्लाइमेट चेंज तो सेपरेट फायर विल बी मेल टू ऑल द मेंबर्स ऑफ आई सी एस आई एंड सी एस आई ए एंड वी आर रिक्वेस्टिंग टू प्लीज अटेंड द सेम नाउ आई एम रिक्वेस्टिंग जारा टू प्लीज प्रेजेंट अ वोट ऑफ थैंक्स थैंक यू सो मच जारा अनम्यूट योर सेल्फ प्लीज Zara unmute yourself Tonu, please check. Yes. Yeah. So I think some technical uh, please there. Just wait one moment, sir. Yeah. So now you please present a vote of thanks. I think there is some technical issue. So please conclude the uh, webinar by presenting the vote of thanks on behalf of ICSI and CSI. Yes. Twenty uh, twenty has taught us the this uh, pandemic scenario and uh, this is a future challenges also. So I would like to thank Dr. Edo De Vete for sharing the vision of the future governance professional mm -hmm. and the program he has developed to equip. governance professional to adopt landscape by introducing innovation to improve decision making and i would like to thank to the csa for my president icsi cs nagendra rao ji and the cs ashish gaddi who is the president csi and the all the team with the jara and sra and of course a big thank to our audience member who are listening this uh, from the remote location across the globe and i engagement from the audience and the question and i trust that it will leave here today not only with the broader the knowledge but also inspired and motivated to practice and promote good governance thank you and everyone namaste thank you thank you so much thank you edo thank you president Recording has stopped.